So we as farmers will not have any ability to market GM free food because you will have contamination. The next wave is pharmaceutical and industrial crops. That means you have a wheat crop or, or whatever that looks the same but it has one gene in it that becomes a little factory to produce the ingredients for drugs or for an industrial plastics, etc. You're going to have the same contamination problem occurring here. But who do you know that will accept drugs and plastics in their food? You are to accept a tolerance level of that. Well, I can tell you, you won't. You will be insisting, sorry, you will be insisting on a GM-free product. That means farmers lose the right to market food. We can't accept that. We can't do that. It's not possible. There is no risk management in place to allow us to be able to market free. It's our responsibility to provide the product you want, not, not their responsibility to keep their rubbish out of our crops. You won't be able to grow pharmaceutical crops either because you're not going to have a drug crop, a, a, a heart drug accepting bit of Viagra in it. Sure, it might spark up some, having that in the scones might spark up this church meeting, but it's not going to be accepted. So you, we're going to be limited to growing industrial crops. Very serious problem. But non-GM biotechnology, we're so told of how much, how many great things we're going to be offered. That's non-GM biotechnology. All of these are non-GM. That's where your benefits are going to come from. So what the heck's going on? Why are we being sold GM? Let's look at what we've got. We've got 12 years later, all these false promises, even you've got the Federal Minister for Agriculture saying we've got drought tolerance. That's a load of rubbish. 12 years later, it's a failure. You've still got the same two varieties you started off with. Herbicide tolerant, where the crop is resistant to herbicides, or BT, where the crop produces insecticide to control bollworm and budworm in either cotton or corn. That's it. It doesn't kill all the other insects, so you still got to spray the insecticides for any other insect. So you've got 68% is herbicide tolerant, 19% is BT, and the balance is a combination of the two. That's it, despite all the pro false promises. But what's happening is the non-GM biotechnology traits are patented by Monsanto. It's really quite interesting because in Jeffrey Smith's book, Seeds of Deception, you'll, you'll find where they quote, it, it kicks off with a meeting held by Monsanto, one of these pie in the sky um, things. You know, if you were allowed to do anything in the world as a company, what would you want to do? And they decided own the world's food supply. And it became, well, how would you do that? And it was own the seeds that farmers plant. And don't let them plant anything else, so remove the right to replant your own seed. So they had to get a patent and it changed the patent. And you saw a series of introducing a patent that's never been introduced before, removing the right for farmers to replant their own seed. Then it progressed on where Americans in non-GM um, uh, plant breeding um, allowed attracted corporate investment into plant breeding, so they bought in intellectual property, etc., over the non-GM practices. Then, internationally, we all signed the UPOF 91 International Treaty, which brought in plant breeder rights, which allowed the companies to take intellectual property in our non-GM plant breeding. That has now led to the government's withdrawing from plant breeding, where it used to be government funded, and and Farm investors owning it. Monsanto, when I did a GM workshop at CSIRO, all through it I asked, who owns this patent? So who owns this enzyme patent? Monsanto. Who owns this technique? Who owns this machine we're using? Monsanto, Monsanto, Monsanto. And the US government came in there a few times too. So what crops have we got? One thing they've got in common, soy, 
corn, cotton, canola. I think the tactic might have changed. These aren't usually food crops, they're feed crops, which I think the consumer rejection has a bit to do with it. These are your oil ethanol crops. So it's owning your future oil fields, obviously, became a priority first. But notice, no GM wheat is grown commercially anywhere in the world. Soy, cotton and corn are not grown in any quantity in Australia, as Judy explained. So what we're looking at is canola. It's the worst accepted crop out of all of them. And it's almost all limited to Canada. So when we're looking at economic assessment, let's give it a whirl. Is there any farmers here? Oh, yeah, good. Okay. So it's a herbicide tolerant crop competing with our non-GM herbicide tolerant crop. So it's only a weed control tool. So we grow non-GM triazine tolerant, which is resistant to triazine, and non-GM clear field, which is resistant to imidazolinone. Now we've got very different growing conditions. Canada's under snow a fair bit of it, and that would help them control their volunteers. We're not going to have that help. The worst weeds in, in Australia is radish and ryegrass. Radish is our worst broadleaf, ryegrass is our worst grass. For radish, you need a radish control, you need a chemical that kills radish, particularly in canola, because there is no post-emergent option, so you can't spray a different chemical to kill it. And ryegrass, you will need a residual, because ryegrass is fantastic stuff, up it comes, you spray it, rains, up it comes, you spray it, <laughs> you know, it kills it, rain, it pops up all the time, so you need a residual. And one of our worst problems is the natural resistant to glyphosate. Oh, which I forgot to explain. Our weeds are developing resistant to glyph resistance to glyphosate without us wanting them to. 90% of the herbicide tolerant crops released are resistant to glyphosate. You don't need GM. You can do it really well non-GM. Because it's doing it without, weeds are doing it without us wanting them to. In Brazil, some very enterprising drug barons, when they were doing aerial spraying of um, uh, glyphosate, it took them one year to come up with non-GM marijuana <laughs> that was resistant to glyphosate. So very easy to do non-GM. So anyone that's saying that we're doing fantastic things with GM has to have a bit of a look at some facts. Canada grows GM herbicide tolerant canola, so Roundup Ready is resistant to glyphosate and Invigor is resistant to glufosinate ammonium. Now, as farmers, we know that glyphosate's not that flash on radish. Glufosinate ammonium doesn't touch it at all, and neither has the residual that we need to control the ryegrasses. So you're going to have a massive weed problem in your GM crops. This is not about what's best for farmers. This is very e obviously, uh, we've got to contaminate our industry. But we're told it's much better yield. So what happened to Canada when they adopted it? This is your adoption rate here. This is your yield. It actually went down. And yet we are told that we are going to have a 30% increase in yield. This is what's got farmers thinking we're onto something. It's a lie. 